All right, guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at exactly which topics you want to focus your revision on for AQA A-Level Chem Paper 2. So before we get into the actual paper analysis side of things, I just want to emphasize this to you. Your revision time is precious, all right? If you're like me, you do two other subjects, sometimes three. I did biology and maths. Those subjects take up an insane amount of time. On top of chemistry, one of the hardest A-level subjects, you just need to be so much smarter with your time, all right? Next thing, exams are like a game, okay? You have your specification, your examiner's report, your mark schemes, etc. You need to learn from these, okay? Master the game. Now, the point of this video is to go one level deeper and to realize which topics you should focus on, okay? AQA, all examples really, but in this video specific to AQA, they favor specific topics more than others, like drastically favor them, okay? Next thing I'm going to say is I am not a psychic wizard master guru, okay? This video is guidance only. I've spent a ton of time analyzing the papers, looking for patterns, but I'm not a psychic, so things might change, just keep that in mind. When I did this video last year, it was extremely successful for paper one, two, and three. A lot of students said that it was really helpful, so hopefully things continue for 2024 and all goes good. Now, if you haven't already watched my previous paper two 2023 analysis video, I highly recommend that. It's over an hour long, goes into a ton of detail on each topic and what sort of questions come up. But for this video, I'm just gonna skim through the analysis side of things, okay? So feel free to pause the video here. This is every single topic that can come up. So over here, we have all the physical ones. Paper one is not physical only, okay? Paper one is physical inorganic, and then paper two is physical organic, okay? These are all the organic topics right here. So there's an insane amount of content for paper two, a lot more than paper one is deceiving. Now, there's also practicals. Now, I made the mistake when I was doing my A-levels to neglect practicals like crazy. I just basically ignored them. You do not want to do that, okay? There's a lot of practicals for paper one, two, and three. Even though three is known as the one that leans heavily into the practical side of things, paper two also has practicals, so keep that in mind. Now, caveats. If, feel free to skip ahead here, but this is really important that I want to emphasize. Topics such as nomenclature, all right, so naming organic molecules, they come under the introduction to organic chemistry topic, all right, this is super broad, it's a year 12 topic. Now, if an IUPAC nomenclature question comes up, I have included it under the respective topic. So, for example, naming an alkene will come under the alkene topic, etc. Hopefully that's pretty clear, right? Now, next thing here is organic analysis. This can include NMR. If you look at the specification, it does not include NMR. But what they like to do for year 13 A-level papers is just combine everything together. So infrared, NMR, chuck it all together and have a soup of a question, right? So I've normally combined these under organic analysis unless it's only NMR and then I've put it under NMR only. All right, so keep that in mind. Next thing here, tons of synoptic knowledge in paper two, okay? They can combine all sorts of organic functional group type questions together, alkenes with halogeno alkanes with whatever, okay? A lot of organic synthesis based questions, stuff like that, okay? And where it's a mixture of two plus topics, I've tried to just pick the one that is more emphasized in the question. I've done my best here, it's not perfect, but hopefully it can help you out. Right, so let's go into what I did previously. So this is a graph that shows the paper to 2017 to 2022 papers okay so it's excluding 2023 i'll look at that in a second but if you guys haven't seen my previous video i just basically want to explain what this is telling us so at the bottom on the x-axis we just have every topic that can come up and has come up okay and on the y-axis we have all the marks allocated across the six papers so across 2017 to 2022 now as we can see here race equations has 71 marks across the years amount of substance had 60 Chemical equilibrium, KC okay, so had 49, et cetera. Okay, it goes all the way down here. Now, there are ones beyond this, but I've excluded them because I thought, you know, anything lower than 10 marks, I don't really care about for the sake of this video. If you are going for an A star, 100%, which, you know, I think is unwise in certain situations, I'm not going to go into that in this video, then look at every single topic throughout the entire specification. So this was 2017 to 2022. As I said, previous video from last year, I went into so much more detail. But let's look at 2023 and see how things changed. So just like paper one, things did not change, all right? The only thing that was a bit surprising was energetics, okay? They threw in a lot of energetics in this paper, 12 marks. Outside of that, like if you look at this, there was 10 marks in energetics across the six years. That's why I said things can switch up, but across the board, things remain constant. So if we look at this, rate equations was number one with 15 marks. 
amount of substance was 13 marks. So if we look at this, the trend, the top two topics were the top two topics in 2023. They threw in this as a bit of a curveball. Then we had organic analysis, carboxylic acids, NMR and alkenes. So if we look at this, they will be among the top. So carboxylic acids, then we have organic analysis, NMR. Okay, they're among some of the top topics. Things do not change year after year, okay? As I said, this was a curveball right here. I didn't see this coming. And you should keep that in mind when it comes to paper two, 2024. So as in all of these videos, right? I care about get, getting an A. I think an A is a fantastic grade for most people. A star is also great, but the amount of time that it takes to go from like a C to an A is probably equivalent to go from an A to an A star, something like that. Maybe even more, just because you have to be so perfect. You're going from 71% for an A here. These are the marks, by the way. This is the grade boundaries all the way up to 83.8%, okay? So there's a big jump there. You need to get 88 marks out of 105 in order to get an A star. It's not impossible, it's just a lot harder than getting an A. So what does this red dash box mean here? That's essentially telling you that if you got 100% of these topics right here, you would get 78 marks, which is an A, okay? So I've just highlighted these topics. If you got zero for all of these, you'd still get an A, okay? So just keep that in mind. Obviously, it's good to pick up a few marks here and there, but I just want to emphasize that to you that these topics take up majority of the marks. So let's go into a bit more detail here. Look at 2017 to 2023. How do things change? What topics should you focus on? And then I'm going to go into a lot more detail when it comes on to the frequency and that sort of things in the final table, just like I do in all my videos. So things have not changed, guys. I highly suggest you look at rate equations, amount of substance, carboxylic acids, organic analysis, organic synth, this is very big, okay? Chemical equilibria KC. The reason this one is so big is because it's a physical topic that does not really come up in paper one. They favor KP in paper one just because it's a new topic for the specification. It wasn't in the prior specification, so they absolutely go mad for it. I think it's been in pretty much every single paper. So what they do is they transition everything that was in KC to paper two, okay? Just keep that in mind. NMR is key. Go over NMR. I know people struggle with it. It's like a little puzzle game, but do your best to remember that. And then it goes off, trails off from there. Now, as I said, NMR also falls into organic analysis. These two are key and then honestly not that hard. If you get your head wrapped around the data booklet, uh, the data insert, whatever it's called, and get used to using those different functional groups, you're going to be completely fine. Again, like I said, this one was a curveball in 2023, energetics. That same sort of thing might happen this year. Maybe they'll throw in a bunch of marks for polymers or chromatography. I highly doubt chromatography, but you never know. Okay, so just keep this in mind that they can throw curveballs at you. But year after year, these top topics do not change. And let's look at that right now. All right, master these topics. So which ones would, if I was to get a time machine, go back in time, I would use this table to its full extent. Okay, I would, I would take a screenshot, I'd send it to all my friends, be like, look guys, stop wasting time on polymers, uh, revising for hours and hours and hours on polymers, let's focus on these instead, okay? So if we look right here, we have the total marks across the seven papers, so 2017 to 2023. Paper frequency, right, is just how many times that came up. So for example, rate equations came up in all seven papers, organic analysis came up in six, chemical equilibria KC came up in five, et cetera. Hopefully that's pretty simple to understand, right? And then average marks per paper is just this total marks divided by the paper frequency. All right, so pretty simple there. All right, so where are we gonna start guys? Rate equations, okay? This isn't exactly where I recommend you to start because if you're lacking fundamentals from things like amount of substance, you're gonna struggle with rate equations because it's quite calculation based. There's a lot of graphs and stuff like that, okay? But that is essentially where you wanna pour a ton of your exam season revision time into is learning and understanding rate equations. Do every single pass paper topic for this over and over again, focus on your mistakes and improve, okay? The questions are gonna be super similar year after year. They tweak them slightly, but they only have a limited amount of style questions that they can ask, okay? Obviously, amount of substance. This is huge. Amount of substance, you're gonna get so much out of this for paper one, two, and three, okay? Even the MCQs use some amount of substance, so just keep that in mind. That's what I would go for there. Carboxylic acids, no-brainer, okay? A ton of functional groups here, esters, acyl chlorides, blah, blah, blah. All of these three have come up in every single paper, and they've got the most marks, okay? So it's a no-brainer to start with these three. Outside of these three, Organic synth has come up every single time as well. So that's really important. Do your best to memorize the pathways for organic synthesis. So how different reactants, reagents, conditions, stuff like that, how they feed in together. 
blur it on the page, do your flashcards, just do your best to remember that because it will actually help you a lot and there's quite a lot of marks up for grabs, okay? Organic analysis and NMR are both key. They love to test your ability to analyze spectra and stuff like that, okay? Like little puzzles, they test your chemical understanding and your ability to problem solve, do these sort of questions, all right? They love to test your knowledge on that. As I said, KC, do KC, guys, because it does not come up in paper one, really. They focus on KP a lot more of the time because that is unique to paper one. They cannot ask you KP questions in paper two, okay? So just keep that in mind. Next here is good old aldehydes and ketones. So this is fundamental to year 12. It's come up every single year, and I highly suggest all my students to learn it because it's a super easy topic. All right, so that is where I would start. All right, I, I know there's a lot in paper two to unpack, but you can see here, use this table however you want, but you need to be specific with where you allocate your revision hours. There's only so many hours in a day. Last thing I wanna do is study 24 seven. Then obviously this is the harder level content, okay? So the year 13 stuff is all gonna be here. What you also wanna do is don't take for granted the year 12 stuff, it's super easy to learn. Just look up some YouTube videos, some past paper questions and bang out alkenes, alkanes, alcohols, stuff like that, halogeno alkanes as well. These are all fundamental to build upon for year 13, okay? But that is where I would spend my revision time. Use this table however you want, that's the end of the video, guys. I really hope you found it helpful. If you did, like the video. It really helps the channel out. Send this to your mates that are doing chemistry. Hopefully save them a bunch of time when they're studying. All the best with your revision and upcoming exams, guys. Until next time, peace.